see these two experiments. In the first experiment, you can see the light bulb glows when a conductivity meter, which is looking like this, the probes are here, dipped in a solution of sodium chloride. Sodium chloride is, you know, the common salt NaCl, which is dissolved in water. So that is in the aqueous form because it is dissolved in water. And so which are the ions formed when you dissolve sodium chloride in water are sodium ions and chloride ions. Sodium ions, in general, I can say any ionic compound, positive ion and a negative ion, right? Okay, so these ions are in the solution now. So they are free to move like this, okay? So that is the reason it is conducting electricity. In the same way, if you are melting sodium chloride, it will be in the liquid form. That liquid form also uh, conduct electricity because these ions are free to move. Suppose you are taking solid sodium chloride, NaCl solid. What happens here is the ions are tightly packed. They are not free to move. So will they conduct electricity? No, they are not going to conduct electricity in the solid form because the ions cannot move. So that is, again, we can say that positive and negative, they are polar. We call it as polar because the two charges, positive and negative. So those compounds are called polar compounds. So in general, we can say ionic compounds are polar. Okay, so as a rule of thumb, if the electronegativity difference is above 1.7 to be accurate 1.67 but we will take it as 1.7 if it is above 1.7 those compounds are ionic okay so in this experiment let's see what is this one hexane which is hydrocarbon made of carbon and hydrogen only and it is a long chain with a six carbon atom in it and all carbon atom is covalently bonded to hydrogen atoms. So this hexane is non-polar because there is no charge separation. The electronegativity difference is going to be between carbon and hydrogen is not going to be that much. It's going to be less than 0.3. Less than 0 0.3, very small difference between the electronegativity value, so we considered as non polar. Now, let us take the example of water. You already learned how to draw the Lewis dot for water molecule. This is water molecule, correct? This is highly polar because the electronegativity difference between oxygen and hydrogen will come around 1.4 okay which is a huge difference so we considered as polar and we know that's a covalent compound so we call it as polar covalent it's not above 1.7 so we if it is above 1.7 that is ionic but it is below 1.7 so this is just polar covalent bond now consider here alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, which is a rubbing alcohol. So in any alcohol when you take, and what is happening here is, uh, in the case of water, uh, if you keep a charged ebonite rod or a charged balloon closer to the water, you can see that it is little bending, right? It is moving away from that charged particle. That is because it is polar. And now in the case of hexane, you don't see that bending. That is because it is non-polar. So how will you measure, in the same trend you can find in the alcohol as well. So how will you measure the polarity of a compound? We use the term dipole moment, and which is the quantitative measure of the polarity of the bond, which is defined here, the quantitative the quantitative measure of the polarity of a bond that is called dipole moment. So di means two, two poles, positive pole and negative pole. And how much polar it is, 
we are expressing using the term dipole moment and here some details on that one In the examination point of view it's not that important but here the details are here that is the charge times distance and the dipole moment is measured using the unit called d by and uh, bond dipole moment is a vector quantity that is going to be important for us but i will explain in a different way that one and it has that means both magnitude and direction so let's see go ahead and see in detail the polarity how to determine the polarity so as we just discussed direction is marked towards the electronegative atom so who, who is more electronegative here it's chlorine so we have to put an arrow mark towards the electronegative atom with small line crossing that arrow that's the way we represent the dipole moment in a molecule the length of the arrow indicates the magnitude of the dipole moment and the arrow should direct the electronegative atom the direction should be towards the electronegative atom okay so how will you decide using this dipole moment and all how will you decide whether the given molecule is polar or non polar that's what important in chemistry so each bond in the molecule is non polar when if there is no unbonded electron pairs who is that unbonded electron pairs are lone pairs if there is no lone pairs we call it as um non polar but that's the only condition no and actually will be the compound non polar if there is lone pair not necessarily let's see why but that is one of the condition general so each bond in the molecule has the same polarity what is that means each bond has the same polarity means what let's see an example of di uh, diatomic molecule say for example hydrogen is bonded to another hydrogen It will have the same polarity so the electrons are shared equally between these two hydrogen atom another example we can take oxygen oxygen also bonded to another oxygen okay so in this case also electrons are shared equally and both will have the same electronegativity so the electronegativity difference will be zero and the bond cannot be polar it's going to be non polar because electrons are not moving closer to anything and this is not going to generate a partial positive or negative charge no and if no unbonded electron pair on the central atom which is same as this one right unbonded electron pairs so as i say we will talk about in detail here this one we cannot actually make it as a rule but yes that causes one some charge so another condition is there is no net dipole moment yes that is very important so what is that means is as we know uh, let us take this example the carbon dioxide okay and how to draw lewis dot structure for carbon dioxide is you already learned carbon double bond o and on this side side also carbon double bond o now if you look at the bonds here who has higher electronegativity high electronegativity is for our oxygen correct what happens is this shared electron will move towards who it will move towards our oxygen from opposite direction same length and opposite direction so it will cancels each other it will cancel so the net dipole means it will zero the net dipole will be dipole moment okay the net dipole moment will be we represent by the letter mu so let us make it it will equal zero so it is non polar this is the type we have to practice non polar so one more time this even though the bonds are polar here the bond is polar why because the electronegativity is different for carbon and oxygen that will give you some electronegativity difference and oxygen will have slight negative charge and carbon will have slight positive charge but what is happening here 
even though the bonds are polar we have net dipole moment zero that means the molecule is non-polar molecule is non-polar so that's what it means and now as we can see in from the table here the, see the electronegativity difference the electronegativity difference is uh, huge for hydrogen and fluorine so it is polar highly polar okay dipole moment is very big so this is highly polar and when you go down in the same group fluorine chlorine bromine and iodine they are in the same group so the electronegativity difference between them is decreasing because down the group you know that electronegativity differences electronegativity decreases down the group so when it forms the bond with the hydrogen it is decreasing down the group so you can see that the difference is here the difference is here okay so the dipole moment is decreasing that means the polarity also decreases The effect of polar bond on the polarity of the entire molecule depends on the molecule shape. Okay, very important. Carbon dioxide has two polar bonds, exactly we just explained, and it is linear, and the dipole moments cancel. This one cancel with this one. So the molecule is non-polar. And now let's see the polar compounds. Dipole moments are asymmetrical. So the molecule is asymmetrical and the molecule has net dipole moment because of the shape, because it's a bent shape. The, the dipoles are in this direction. Again, dipoles are in this direction and the resultant vector is going to be this direction. And there are two lone pairs on oxygen. So all contribute to the dipole moment, a very high dipole moment for this one. So it is highly polar that is why water molecule is highly polar so in conclusion we can say the dipole moment or the polarity of the molecule depends on the dipole moments and the molecular shape we will practice some questions but remember these two points